Hi, everybody. Welcome. Glad to be with you here on this Wednesday in this 22nd week of Ordinary Time. Thank you for joining us. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. God loves us without condition, loves us recklessly. Let's ask him now for his mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the way. Lord, have mercy. You're the truth, Christ have mercy. And you, you are the life, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to one holy ones and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, in Colossa, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for the holy ones because of the hope reserved for you in heaven. Of this you have already heard through the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you, just as is in the whole world is in it, is bearing fruit and growing, so also among you from the day you heard it and came to know the grace of God in truth, you learned it from Ephesus, our beloved fellow slave, who is a trustworthy minister of Christ on your behalf and also told us of your love in the spirit. The word of the Lord. I trust in the mercy of God. Green olive tree in the house of God. 
trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I trust in the mercy of God thank you always for what you have done, and proclaim the goodness of your name before your faithful ones. I trust in the mercy of God forever. I trust in the mercy of God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus left the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a severe fever, and they interceded with him about her. He stood over her, rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on them. At sunset, all who had people sick with various diseases were brought brought them to him. He laid his hands on each of them and cured them. And demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them, did not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus left and went to a deserted place. The crowds went looking for him. And when they came to him, they tried to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, to the other towns also I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God, because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, this week we have begun, as we have said before, reading from the Gospel of Luke. And we began in Nazareth, Jesus uh, proclaims his mission that he of why he was sent. Then yesterday, as we heard, he went to Capernaum. They make his headquarters there. And, and uh, um, um, he also goes into the synagogue and he teaches. And then there was the demon there. We talked about this yesterday. The demon-possessed man screams at the top of his lungs, what do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So we made the claim that it's the demons, they know who Jesus is. And, and uh, they know who he is, but they just work against that because they cannot abide this way of love, this way of service, this way of, of self-gift that Jesus is offering to our world and offering to all of us. The demon's right, but he's disruptive and he has to go. And it goes on to say that people are amazed. Now, that doesn't mean people believe necessarily, but they were amazed because here's someone doing something different. They're amazed in all this. And you're going to hear that over and over again in the Gospel of Luke, that they were somehow amazed. So here we are uh, in, in Peter's house first. Now, archaeologists, uh, in, in, in their diggings and through Capernaum, they found the synagogue that we're talking about in the Gospel here today. And it's believed that Peter's house was right next door. So Jesus going to Peter's house and, and to uh, his mother-in-law that would have been a very, very short walk, maybe right across the street, in a sense, and rebukes the fever. And The Chosen, actually, this was this on television on Sunday. I was watching The Chosen after Follow Your Faith, 
It's on television, by the way, on, on channel 715. It's there. And this was the gospel of, of Jesus uh, rebuking the fever of uh, Peter's mother-in-law. But then uh, it says in the gospel today that all of a sudden people began to bring all these people to Jesus, to heal them, to cast out demons. And, and just so you and I can know, and, 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 and I, Jesus, I am tired. God, I'm tired. But Jesus was tired. The God man was tired. I want you to watch this clip from the chosen of Jesus. I think all these people coming to him. He serves all of them. He speaks to all of them. He engages all of them. He's really, really tired. This God man, Jesus, like one of us, got really, really tired. Let's watch this. So, there's our tired Jesus, the one who came to redeem us. But also, too, he spoke with authority. And, and uh, that's what happens, if I may put it this way. Every single Mass, in the Liturgy of the Word, Jesus speaks with authority. Uh, the Scriptures, we should hear them every single Sunday, every single day, as Jesus speaking to us. The, the, the lectionary the words that we hear every single Sunday at, at, at uh, every single liturgy of the word, as we do that here today, we should hear this as Jesus speaking to us with authority. And then at Mass, after Jesus speaks, he always acts. The liturgy of the word, then comes the liturgy of the Eucharist, where he comes to heal, not to cure. There's a difference between curing and healing. I should spend a whole liturgy of the word on this one. To heal is to heal us from the inside out. So we know more and more and more our role in this world. More and more come to know that, that we need to live by Jesus's way 
and, and that our healing becomes a deeper, deeper experience of Jesus. That's the great healing that all of us need to undergo every single day of our lives. To cure, he did that sometimes too. But oftentimes we or maybe other people want God to cure something, fix this, do something, and then I can ignore you, Lord. I'll go on with the rest of my day. I'll bother you the next time I need something. So this is not what Jesus does. He brings us to a deeper, intimate relation with him and heals us from the inside out, heals, transforms, uh, enters into a holy communion with us. This is the great healing that Jesus wants to bring. And I see that everywhere, absolutely everywhere, that kind of healing. He unties the burden of our sins and he heals us emotionally, spiritually, physically, in so many different ways that we are the ways in which we are broken by sin. This is the healing Jesus wishes to offer to us. You know, we have actually have two sacraments of healing: sacrament of anointing the sick, a healing of our 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 minds, our hearts, our emotions, our bodies, and the sacrament of reconciliation, where we are healed from our sins and we're able to say we are sorry for our sins. And let the healing begin for all of us. So Jesus, the Jesus who speaks with authority in the gospel today, speaks in that very same authority in the liturgy, in the liturgy of the word. Then he acts by offering us a holy communion with him. What a, what a treasure we have in this liturgy of the word, which we're doing here today, and also the liturgy of the Eucharist. Here's my question for today. Jesus wants to set us free. What in your life right now? needs the healing touch of Jesus. Thanks, folks, for joining me. This tired Jesus isn't too tired for you. And when we feel tired, let's ask him again to somehow, God, I'm tired of whatever it might be in you. I need you. What do we need in our lives to make us less tired and more open to this love that God has for us? Thanks, folks, for joining me and looking forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye now.